John Poplock. Welcome back to Ion Harness Racing. In this edition, we'll continue with our plans to go back to the track, look at America's bad luck in the Elite Lop, and check in with the racing stars of this past weekend. A total of 16 tracks have now signed on for Back to the Track weekend on August 14th and 15th. The tracks will be offering any number of special reasons for fans to enjoy racing on track. Scarborough Downs is among those planning many surprises for fans. We spoke with Sarah Higgins, Scarborough's marketing director. We first heard that the U.S. Trotting Association was putting together this Back to the Track program. We were absolutely thrilled because not only is it coinciding on a day where we have a big event planned at the track here, um, the Joe Ritchie Memorial Trot, on August 14th, we were just thrilled because it's a perfect marriage between getting fans here to showcase what our product is as well as show what what's available and what are all the the wonderful ways to promote the sport. We've got free programs. We've got um, we are going to do some of the starting gate rides. We're going to do free food and drink specials. We are going to be offering handicapping seminars to the public. Um, we've got we've got a lot of things um, Plan that we want to make sure not only just the fans but also the horsemen that the, make sure the horsemen get up in every single winter circle picture. Um, we're going to do interviews with the drivers. We're definitely doing a T-shirt giveaway, which is thrilling to us. We're thinking actually having some of the drivers throw toss some of these T-shirts into the crowd. We're going to be doing all kinds of giveaways and just make it a big party at the track. <laughs> Other tracks will offer similar reasons to go back to the track. And we suggest you check online for more details between now and August 14th and 15th. The New York Sire Stakes has announced that business has been so good at the state's on-track VLT parlors that the state-bred stakes have been increased by $3 million this year to a whopping $19 million. The Rich Series will start on June 6th and will be raced at all the paramutual tracks, 22 county fairs, and at Goshen Historic Track. The winner of the 2010 Golden Pen Award has been announced. Kelly Spencer has been honored by the Standard Bread Media and Marketing Association in a vote of the former winners of the prestigious award. Spencer is the manager of marketing and communications at Grand River Raceway in Ontario, which has turned many of Spencer's ideas for drawing fans into big crowds in recent years. On a sad note, Doug Harkness, founder and for four decades the editor of Atlantic Post Calls, died this past Friday. Harkness was an enthusiastic voice for harness racing in Atlantic Canada, sometimes offering criticism of the industry when he felt it was due, but no one questioned his love of harness racing. He was 71. <laughs> Lucky Jim, enough talk to find the world, and Lisa America gave their North American connections plenty of reasons to be optimistic going into this past Sunday's Elite Loop at Stockholm, Sweden. But when all was said and done, it was the host country that stood in the winner's circle. All four failed to move out of the eliminations, and history was set in the final. Stefan Melander's Iceland in rain to Johnny Tactor made Melander only the second trainer to win the Hamiltonian, pre damerique and Elite Loop joining Johnny Tactor's younger brother, Jimmy, in turning that trotting hat trick. In the final, Iceland sped to an early lead and held off the challenge of last year's winner. It's time to look at this week's honor roll of speed, the list of top horses on both the trot and pace according to Trackmaster speed ratings. This week, the top trotter was Brighton Up, who posted a 102 at Pocono Downs, and the top pacer was Pilgrim's Towner, who put up a 107 also at Pocono. His mile, by the way, was a 148 and two world record equaling effort. Of course, these speed ratings, considered official by the U.S. Trotting Association, are exclusively available to those who want to find a winning edge by purchasing Trackmaster products. At Trackmaster, it's all about winning. 
Powerful handicapping products built on official USTA data help you be the best horse player you can be. And free services such as StatsMaster and the Virtual Stable also put the odds in your favor. The winning starts at TrackMaster.com. Some of the sport's leading sophomore pacing colts were at Hoosier Park this past weekend for the $500,000 Hoosier Cup, in which World of Rock and Roll and driver Ron Pierce dominated in front of a packed grandstand. The winner came from post 12 in the second tier and followed Hall of Fame driver Dave McGee in All That Glitters is Gold when they made their move toward the wire. All That Glitters is Gold, second to the outside, to the inside, racing in third. It's for an officer. They come to the wire. It's World of Rock and Roll to take the 2010 Hoosier Cup in 150. Last year's freshman Colt pacing champion, sports rider, who's being uh, aimed at the June 26 North America Cup, made his 2010 debut at Mohawk Racetrack this past Saturday night. Mark McDonald was in the sulky and decided to sit chilly in the early going before winding things up and finishing strongly in the lane second behind Kid Carson. Penezer, sports rider pacing up now in between horses, Kid Carson. Kid Carson in the center. Kid Carson ahead the best. Sports rider was second in 150 and two. Auckland Reactor, who was beaten handily in his North American debut last week, had a chance to atone for that loss this past Sunday. He was sent to the top by driver Yannick Jingra at Chester and held that position when turning for home. But Blatantly Good has the upper hand today. Blatantly Good has taken over. Auckland Reactor has faded back. Blatantly Good won it by two. Also, despite finishing second this past weekend, Go On BB was honored at Hoosier Park this past Saturday, for becoming the first Indiana bred since Rambling Willie, other standard bred or thoroughbred, in fact, to earn $1 million in purses. We add our congratulations to owner Frank Baldacino and trainer Ron Burke. We have the sharpest audience in all of horse racing, especially when it comes to answering questions about elite lope history. Last week, we asked who was the first of four winners of the Swedish Trotting Classic to have U.S. connections. Harry Lair of Harpersville, New York, was among the many who knew that Elma, in 1965, was the first to plant the U.S. flag in the winner's circle at Stockholm. Harry, for that winning answer, a copy of 100 Years in Harness will be put in the mail. Here is this week's challenge. The Art Rooney Pace is the next major stakes for three-year-old pacing colts this year. It has been won by such stars as Precious Bunny, Life Sign, Cam's Card Shark, and Gallo Blue Chip. But none of those horses own the Rooney Stakes record. Simply stated, who does? To win this week's prize, which will be one of our brand new long sleeve logo t-shirts, send your name and address along with your answer via email to i at ustrotting.com. We'll draw the winner from among the correct entries received no later than this coming Monday at midnight. Good luck, everyone. Speaking of emails, we'd love to hear from you as always. Send your comments and questions to i at ustrotting.com. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Heather Dodds for her fine work in this spot last weekend. And I'd also like to thank you for watching. Here's an important note. We're changing our schedule beginning with next week's show. We will be with you on Thursday afternoon, beginning next week and throughout the balance of the racing season. Join us on Thursday for another edition of Eye on Harness Racing.